Thank you. Okay, I'm going off then. It, this is uh, Nina Turner with Disney. I'm doing the global generic. First question, describe the moment you knew you were going to be part of the MCU. Mm. I found out I was gonna be part of the MCU uh, after a meeting I had, top secret meeting, which was also a whole new world for me, <laughs> um, with uh, the director, Matt Shackman, the amazing writer, um, Jack Schaefer, and our producer, Mary Lovanos, um, in an office at Marvel where I was escorted in and escorted out, but everything felt very top secret. And they laid out the idea for this show to me. And I was in my wildest dreams, could not imagine um, a, a character or entrance in this world that would be more fun, more trippy, um, more surreal or more delicious than, than, than this one. <laughs> I mean, it's just, can't believe it. Still can't believe it. <laughs> can't believe I get to see I'm, I'm in the MCU and that my, uh, first appearance is walking through a door in a 1950s black and white sitcom just makes zero sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think fans love Wanda and vision and their relationship so much? I think these, I think fans love one and vision um, and, and their sweet, sweet relationship in the same way that I, I do, I, I can't speak for all fans, but I know that when I saw those movies with my kids who are now older, but when I saw those movies for the first time, I remember through all of that, like, you know, beautiful mayhem and this like huge, all those huge set pieces, like there, I remember being so struck by this little teeny heartbeat in the middle of them, which was the chemistry between Lizzie and Paul and those two characters. And there's something so true and so real and so small and so beautiful between the two of them, those characters. And I think that's why fans really, it really resonated with people because in the middle of all of this grandiose, amazing superhero stuff that we have come to know and love. There was this teeny little love story. And I think that's why people are so excited about this, this series is because it lets us drop into that and spend some more time with them that those big, beautiful movies have not afforded us to yet. Great. Where do you, we find Wanda and Vision as this series kicks off and who do you play? We find Wanda and Vision as a newly married couple who have just moved to the town of Westview, which is a very nice suburb. It's a suburban town of, uh, um, it's a very nice suburban town and I play Agnes, their next door neighbor. And she happens to be in uh, a very familiar way. Uh, the, the neighbor that just kind of pops by unannounced has a, offers a lot of advice solicited and non, um, has a lot of loves gossip and loves to kind of um, show her the ropes of this new town um, and also kind of make fun of it. <laughs> Is there anyone you channeled in portraying Agnes? I mean, there's so many. I, I mean, there's so, so many. Uh, I, you know, I, I, sitcoms are so embedded in like my personhood as like a comfort place, I think, from when I was a kid. And so like, I, you know, I see so many like, you know, there's Ethel, there's Evan Nora, there's the guy from Seinfeld, can't remember his name. There's like Lenny and Squiggy or, you, you know, there's all, there's so many of, of these in every single sitcom that we know and love. There's, you know, th that neighbor character that's always there with just like friendly advice, wanted or not wanted, that always happens to plop themselves on the couch. Um, and almost seems to like just live off, just be living in the house, you know, nothing about their own personal life, but they're just there. And I feel like um, I was so fun to pay homage to all those amazing actors and characters. 
What did you think when you first heard about the concept for WandaVision? I mean, I had them repeated to me a couple of times uh, <laughs> because it was very trippy. And then I was so juiced up and just inspired that Kevin Feige and all of them were going to take this kind of a um, artistic and creative just swing because it is really truly unlike anything the MCU has ever done. And it is, um, it's so multi-layered and it is, I was just like mouth to the floor. Like, how are you gonna pull this off? And I was, I am so pleased to say that um, it has so far what I've seen has exceeded anything that I, I, I'm just so excited for the planet to see it. Great. How did you prepare for the classic sitcom style? We had, I prepared for this, for this sitcom style by A, just watching a lot of them. Um, as a child myself, so I was, I was already born <laughs> ready. Um, and also we did a sitcom boot camp, all of us um, together, the cast, um, our director, Matt Shackman and the writer, Jack Schaefer, when we first got together to do this way, way, way back when, we all had like three weeks to rehearse and watch basically um, sitcoms for every era that we would be dropping into for every genre. And so for the 50s, it was Dick Van Dyke. We watched a ton of Dick Van Dyke. For the 60s, it was Bewitched and then onward and onward. But um, that's, that's how we prepared. We also, we had an amazing dialect coach by the name of Courtney Young, who um, just gifted us with so much auditory material, interviews, commercials, just source material from the 50s and then from the 60s on so that we could just like, I, I would just be walking around listening to voices and um, she was an enormous help of getting, of getting that exact voice because it just it actually lives in a different place in your throat. Um, and uh, so that was it. That was an enormous help. And then those costumes. I mean, Maya, the designer, is just a goddess. And um, once you put that corset on, and you have to speak higher, and wear those heels all the time, and nylons, like it's a whole other ball game. And it just makes me very grateful to be able to wear tennis shoes and sweatpants underneath this Zoom that you're watching right now. <laughs> A lot of work. Can you describe the efforts behind the scenes from costumes to production design to dialect coach to ensure the classic style with, with un, authentic throughout each era? Yes, I mean, from every level of, in terms of production for this, the artists working um, behind the scenes to realize these these eras were just mind blowing. Um, I mean, the production design is was extraordinary from every every little detail in there. Um, the costumes, as you could tell, Maya was is just a wizard, and she just made such unbelievable from the from the undergarments on, like you were in the period. Um, she even dressed the background of the, um, uh, the audience for our live audience. Um, I mean, the camera operators, I, I, I mean, she, she outdid herself. Everybody, the hair, um, the makeup, my team was unbelievable. Um, the best wigs I've ever, like all of it, like these, these artists that we worked with were incredible. And as I was talking before, Courtney Young, who did our, who was our dialect coach, really worked at not only just like going through different sounds, but um, just flooding our inboxes in the best way as an actor. It's like my favorite thing with source material from the actual era. So we got like, you know, it was like commercials and interviews and um, sound bites and things that we would just, I would just be able to like listen to and kind of get, find the vibe that way. Um, 
all all of it. So, so from every department, we were just for every era that we moved into, we were just like cocooned in that in in that in that world and in that space. Um, and really in that era, like I was just blown away by the artists that worked on this. Props, like, I mean, ev everybody, everybody was working at the top of their game. Now you talked about the costume. So what, did you have a favorite costume? Yes, I mean, I really, I, I, I love that 50s costume so much. I mean, and it's so crazy because you can't see it. The black and white wardrobes are so beautiful. And if you were to see those in color, you can't believe how vivid and incredible they are. But because she knows exactly what colors, uh, which is like beyond me, my, but because she knows what colors would pop the most in black and white and on that kind of, in that kind of camera, she was able to pick the perfect ones to like, and just if you would have, uh, you know, it's, it was, it's amazing to think of us walking around in, in, those, in those costumes that would never even be seen in, in these incredible colors. I, I mean, it was pretty amazing. Describe, you talked about this a little bit, but describe the experience of shooting episode one in front of the live audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we shot the 50s episode in front of a live audience. Um, the live audience, which was of course very daunting, <laughs> but the the positive of it, and uh, you know, as an actor, it's like my dream, was that we were able to rehearse it together as a company, really, for like three weeks beforehand, and we were able to go through kind of like a sitcom boot camp almost. So we rehearsed it. I mean, to the to the T, because you know, all all of those things are all, you know, obviously so much about just timing. It's like doors and yada, 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 yada. It's like, and all the things that you see Wanda doing in the kitchen, like those were, it's like period um, effects. So it's like wires and, and, um, and uh, you know, it's not like CGI or anything. It's all like wires and things like that. So it took a long time to rehearse. And the laughs that you hear are the laughs from the studio audience fr from the day that we shot it, which is also pretty incredible. Also props to everybody that was sitting in there and kept that a secret for so long. I know you had to sign a gazillion things, but I, it's just pretty amazing that that, um, that happened and they, um, that, that we were able to pull that off is pretty extraordinary. We were very, the script is written by Jack Schaefer uh, the scripts were written so to the era that they are, that they're in. So the jokes, especially in the 50s, are so charmingly baked into the 1950s that I think that a lot of us were like wondering if a modern audience watching it live was going to find it funny. <laughs> and we were so surprised once we got there as to how many light laughs were coming. Like it was just such a charming, delightful, um, beautiful, nostalgic day. And we were racing around behind the scenes with quick changes and props. And I, I mean, it was mayhem in the, in the best kind of a way. And it, it was like, I, again, couldn't, can't believe that that was my introduction to the MCU. <laughs> Can you talk about working with Lizzie and Paul for the series? I, um, as I, I love, I have been a huge fan of Lizzie Olsen's for a bazillion years. And um, I was so excited to get to work with her and to know her. Um, I think she's such an extraordinary actor and has such integrity and depth as a human being and as a performer. And, and Paul as well, like the both of their, and their chemistry together in the MCU is, is so tender and so true. And, and especially in the, in the, in the middle of all of those beautiful set pieces and all of those superheroes to have like that real true thing, which is their, that love story. I was so excited to be able to work with the both of them as performers um, because I just think they're extraordinary. They're both so, and they all, they check all the boxes that I as a performer 
are my, is like the way to my heart. Like they're incredibly hard workers. They're diligent, they're crafts people. They're not precious. They, um, they're, they look after themselves. Like they're, they just want to work. They're like, they, they're decent, good people. They like, they're, I, I'm just, Lizzie, um, I got mm. to spend a lot of time with, and she's just a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous human being. I, I care about her deeply, and I just think she's also an extraordinary performer. Great, thank you. That was the end of the generic. Um, <laughs> we're gonna. Hey, it's Lisa. Stay with me for more on TV. Do you know who the top three highest paid TV stars are? Well, Johnny Galecki from The Big Bang Theory with 25 million. Jim Parsons also from The Big Bang Theory with 26.5 million. And coming at number one is Sofia Vergara from Modern Family with 42.5 million. Hmm, now who is your favorite TV actor or actress? Now also, do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself. The link is in the description.